The Battle of Tabsa was fought on 19 the 20th of September 1918 beginning the Battle of Sharon, which along with the Battle of Nablus formed the set-piece Battle of Megiddo fought between 19 and 25 September in the last months of the Sinai and Palestine campaign of the First World War. During the infantry phase of the Battle of Sharon the British Empire 60th Division, 21 Corps attacked and captured the section of the front line nearest the Mediterranean coast under cover of an intense artillery barrage including a creeping barrage and naval gunfire. This Egyptian expeditionary force victory over the entrenched Ottoman 8th Army, composed of German and Ottoman soldiers, began the final offensive, ultimately resulting in the destruction of the equivalent of one Ottoman army, the retreat of what remained of two others, and the capture of many thousands of prisoners and many miles of territory from the Judean hills to the border of modern-day Turkey. After the end of the Battle of Megiddo, the Desert Mounted Corps pursued the retreating soldiers to Damascus, six days later. By the time the armistice of Mudros was signed between the Allies and the Ottoman Empire five weeks later, Aleppo had been captured. During the Battle of Tabsa III, 7th and 75th Divisions attacked the entrenched Ottoman Empire 8th Army defending the Tabsa defenses. These defenses were located in the middle section of the front line, assigned to the 21st Corps. On their left the Battle of Tulkam was being fought with the Battle of Arrera fought on their right. Together with the cavalry phase, these battles make up the Battle of Sharon, which, with the Battle of Nablus, fought by the XX Corps and Chaita's force, have become known as the Battle of Megiddo. Megiddo developed into a major set-piece offensive, when large formations of the Allied EF attacked and responded to the reactions of three Ottoman armies, each time following a predetermined plan. The offensive resulted in defeat for Ottoman forces in Palestine, Syria and the Transjordan. These operations began the final offensive, ultimately resulting in the destruction of the equivalent of an Ottoman army, and the retreat in disarray of what remained of two armies. The defeat of the Yildirim army group, commanded by Otto Lehmann von Sanders, resulted in the capture of many thousands of prisoners and many miles of territory stretching from the Judean hills. After the Battle of Megiddo, Desert Mounted Corps pursued the retreating German and Ottoman soldiers to Damascus, which was captured six days later, when the pursuit continued on to close to the border of modern-day Turkey. Five weeks after the final offensive began and with Aleppo captured, the armistice of Mudros was signed between the Allies and the Ottoman Empire ending the fighting in this theater. The Battle of Tabsa began with an intense creeping bombardment, during which three infantry divisions of the 21st Corps attacked the Tabsa defenses, the only continuous trench and redoubt system on the Ottoman front line. As they advanced, their left flank was protected by the 60th Division, which advanced up the coast to Nar el Falik, before capturing Tulkam, the headquarters of the 8th Army. Their right flank was secured by the 54th Division, with the detachment Francais de Palestine et de Syrie pivoting on the Rifot salient. Defending the Ottoman front line against the attacks by the 3rd, 7th, and 75th Divisions were four divisions of the Ottoman 8th Army, the 7th, 20th and 46th Infantry Divisions of the Ottoman 22 Corps and the 19th Division of the German Asia Corps. By the end of the first day of battle, the Ottoman 7th Division had ceased to exist and the Ottoman front line had been pushed and bent back to run north-south. The 7th Army, further inland, was forced to withdraw when the 8th Army was outflanked, to conform with the new Ottoman front line. Chapter 1 Background by July, it was clear that the German spring offensive in France, which had forced the postponement of offensive plans in Palestine, had failed, resulting in a return to trench warfare on the Western Front. This coincided with the approach of the campaign season in Palestine and the Middle East. General Edmund Allenby, commander of the Egyptian Expeditionary Force, was very anxious to make a move in September, when he expected to capture the Ottoman 7th and 8th Army headquarters at Tulkam and Nablus, the road to Gisa Ed Damier, and S. Salt in the hills east of the Jordan River. Another reason for moving to this line is that it will encourage both my own new Indian troops and my Arab allies. Chapter 1 Section 1 Reorganization of EF Infantry After the 52nd, 
the 74th Divisions and 9 British Infantry Battalions from each of the 10th, 53rd, 60th and 75th Divisions were sent to France between May and August 1918, the remaining British Infantry Battalions were reinforced by British Indian Army Battalions. Infantry brigades were now reorganized with one British battalion and three British Indian Army battalions, with the exception of one brigade in the 53rd Division which had one South African and three Indian battalions. The British Indian Army's 7th Division arrived from the campaign in Mesopotamia in January 1918, followed by the 3rd Division in April 1918. Only the 54th Division remained, as previously, an all-British division. By April 1918, 35 infantry and two pioneer battalions were being prepared to move to Palestine. Those battalions with identification numbers from 150 upwards were formed by removing complete companies from experienced regiments then serving in Mesopotamia and forming new battalions. The 2 151st Indian Infantry was one such battalion formed from one company each from the 56th Punjabi Rifles and the 51st, 52nd and 53rd Sikhs. One regiment, the 101st Grenadiers, formed a 2nd Battalion by dividing itself into two with two experienced and two new companies in each battalion. The parent battalions also supplied first-line transport and experienced officers with wartime service. The three 151st Indian Infantry had the commanding officer, two other British and four Indian officers included in the 198 men transferred from the 38th Dogras. The sepoys transferred were also very experienced. In September 1918 the two 151st Indian Infantry had to provide an honor guard for Allenby, among the men on parade were some who had served on five different fronts since 1914 and on eight pre-war campaigns. Of the 54 Indian battalions deployed to Palestine, 22 had recent experience of combat, but had each lost an experienced company, which had been replaced by recruits. Ten battalions were formed from experienced troops who had never fought or trained together. The other 22 had not seen any prior service in the war, in total, almost a third of the troops were recruits. Within 44 Indian battalions, the junior British officers were green, and most could not speak Hindustani. In one battalion only one Indian officer spoke English and only two British officers could communicate with their men. Not all of the Indian battalions served in the infantry divisions, some were employed in defense of the lines of communication. Chapter 1 Section 2 Front Line by September 1918 the front line held by the EF began virtually at sea level at a point on the Mediterranean coast about 12 miles north of Jaffa, just north of Asaf, ran about 15 miles southeast across the plain of Sharon, then east over the Judean hills for about 15 miles, rising to a height of 1,500 to 2,000 feet above sea level. From the Judean hills the front line fell steeply to 1,000 feet below sea level in the Jordan Valley where it continued for about 18 miles to the Dead Sea and the foothills of the mountains of Gilead slash Moab. Chapter 2, Prelude Chapter 2 Section 1, British Plans and Preparations On the first quarter of the front line, which stretched 15 miles across the plain of Sharon from the Mediterranean Sea, the 21st Corps deployed 35,000 infantry, the Desert Mounted Corps 9,000 cavalry, and the artillery's 383 guns for their attacks on the 8th Army. On the remaining three quarters of front line, ending at the Dead Sea, 22,000 infantry, 3,000 cavalry and 157 guns of the 20th Corps and Chaita's force were deployed facing the Ottoman 7th and 4th Armies. The Battle of Sharon was to begin with an attack on an eight-mile-long stretch of front line between the Jaffa-Jerusalem railway running north from Lida towards Tulkarm and the Mediterranean, where Allenby massed three mounted divisions behind three of the 21st Corps infantry divisions supported by 18 densely deployed heavy and siege batteries. Together the five infantry divisions of the 21st Corps, commanded by the British Lieutenant General Sir Edward Bolfin, had an advantage of 4.4 to 1 in total numbers, and three times the defender's heavy artillery. Concentration, surprise and speed were key elements in the blitzkrieg warfare planned by Allenby. 
The four infantry divisions of the 21st Corps were to begin the Battle of Sharon by attacking in overwhelming strength, supported by the greatest possible weight of artillery. The first objective of breaking the German and Ottoman front line was assigned to the 60th Division. They were to create a gap sufficiently large to enable the cavalry to safely advance to the rear of the German and Ottoman forces in the Judean hills. The second objective of assaulting the Tabsa defences was assigned to the 3rd, 7th and 75th Divisions. After their successful initial attack they were to attack the Jilulia Kalkilia et Tyre line. After the cavalry breakthrough on the coast, the 21st Corps advanced to capture the headquarters of the Ottoman 8th Army at Tulkam, and cut the railway lines. Sections of the lateral rail line in the Judean hills between Tulkam and Nablus and a branch of the Jezreel Valley Railway, were to be denied to the 7th and 8th Ottoman armies. These lines, including the important railway junction at Mesodiah, transported their supplies into the Judean hills. The British infantry divisions were to continue their attack by swinging northeast, pivoting on their right to push the defenders back out of their trenches away from the coast and back into the Judean hills towards Mesodiah. While the brigades of the 21st Corps 3rd, the 7th and the 75th Divisions attacked the Tabsa defences, the 54th Division and the Detachment Francais de Palestine et de Syrie defended and pivoted on the Rifot salient covering the right flank. Further to the right, the 20th Corps would begin the Battle of Nablus in the Judean Hills in support of the main attack by the 21st Corps, by advancing to capture the 7th Army headquarters at Nablus and blocking the main escape route from the Judean Hills to the Gisa ed Damier. Together, these attacks would force the Central Powers to retreat back along their main line of communication on the roads and branch lines to the Jezreel Valley Railway. These ran alongside each other out of the Judean Hills, through the Dothan Pass to Jenin and across the Zdrelon Plain, 40 miles away, and on to Damascus. The plain was also the site of the important communication hubs at Afoul and Basin, and here thousands would be captured by the cavalry, as they successfully exploited the infantry victories. The objectives of Desert Mounted Corps were the swift capture of Afula by the 4th Cavalry Division, the swift capture the Yildirim Army Group's headquarters at Nazareth by the 5th Cavalry Division and the swift capture of Jenin by the Australian Mounted Division's 3rd Light Horse Brigade. Together, the occupation of the lowlands of the Plain of Sharon, the Zdrelon Plain and the southern Jordan Valley would form a semicircle round the positions of the Ottoman 7th and 8th Armies in the Judean Hills. Chapter 2 Section 2 – British Empire Deployments the actual frontage which would be directly attacked by the British Empire infantry was about 10 miles long, but it was not continuous. There were about 5 miles of gaps in their deployment, where the terrain was unfavourable for a frontal attack. During the advance, a planned right flanking movement by all the infantry divisions aimed to bring them in touch with one another. At this point in their advance, Ottoman units in those areas unfavorable for frontal attack would be forced to withdraw by the threatening encirclement, be outflanked or be captured from the rear. The final deployment, which was made during 35 minutes of darkness between moonset and dawn, placed the divisions at right angles to the direction of their advance. The 21st Corps 60th Division was deployed closest to the coast with the 7th Division on their right and then the 75th Division with the longest frontage, followed by the 3rd Division the 54th Division and finally the Detachment Francais de Palestine et de Syrie at Rifot, at the eastern end of the 21st Corps front line in the foothills of the Judean Hills. There was no Corps Reserve. Chapter 2 Section 3, German, and Ottoman Forces and Preparations In August 1918, the Central Powers Yildirim Army Group commanded by Otto Lehmann von Sanders consisted of 40,598 frontline infantrymen organized into 12 divisions defending a 56 miles long front. They were armed with 19,819 rifles, 273 light and 696 heavy machine guns. The high number of machine guns reflects the Ottoman army's new tables of organization. Sivat Pasha's 8th Army of 10,000 soldiers was supported by 157 guns. With its headquarters at Tulkam, this army held a line from the Mediterranean coast just north of Asaf to Firka in the Judean hills. 
the 8th Army was organized into the 22nd Corps 7th, 20th and 46th Divisions and the Asia Corps 16th and 19th Divisions, three German battalion groups of the German Pasha II Detachment, and the 2nd Caucasian Cavalry Division in reserve. The German Asia Corps, also known as the Left Wing Group, with a high component of machine guns, was commanded by the German Colonel Gustav von Oppen. The Asia Corps linked the 8th Army's 22 Corps on the coast with the 7th Army's 3 Corps further inland, facing units of the British 20 Corps. The 7th, 19th, and 20th Divisions held the shortest frontage in the entire Yildirim Army group. The 7th and 20th Divisions together held a total of 7.5 miles of trenches. The 7th Division held 4.3 miles nearest the coast while the 20th Division held 3.1 miles and the Asia Corps 19th Division held 6.2 miles of trenches further inland. The 46th Division formed the reserve 7.5 miles from the front line, near the 8th Army's headquarters at Tulkam. These divisions were some of the most highly regarded fighting formations in the Ottoman army, in 1915 the 7th and 19th Divisions had fought as part of ESAT Passa's III Corps at Gallipoli. The 20th Division had also fought towards the end of the Gallipoli campaign and served for a year in Galicia fighting against Russians on the Eastern Front. This regular army division, which had been raised and stationed in Palestine, was sometimes referred to as the Arab Division. The 22nd Corps was supported by the majority of the Yildirim Army's heavy artillery for counter-battery operations. Here, three of the five Ottoman Army heavy artillery batteries in Palestine were deployed. Further, the Ottoman front-line regiments, had been alerted that a major attack was imminent. Chapter 2 Section 3 Subsection 2 Other Views of This Force The Ottoman armies were under strength, overstretched, suffering greatly from a strained supply system, overwhelmingly outnumbered by the EF by about two to one, and hemorrhaging deserters. The effective strengths of the nine infantry battalions of the 16th Infantry Division were each equal to a British infantry company of between 100 and 250 men while 150 to 200 men were assigned to the 19th Infantry Division without taking into account the large number of machine guns in these Asia Corps divisions. Problems with the supply system in February 1918 resulted in the normal daily ration in Palestine being 125 grains of bread and boiled beans in the morning, at noon, and at night, without oil or any other condiment. Chapter 2 Section 4, Tabsa Defenses The Tabsa defenses consisted of the only continuous trench and redoubt system on the front line. Here the Ottomans had dug two or three lines of trenches and redoubts, varying in depth from one to three miles. These defences centred on the village of Tapsa, and stretched from Juljulai to the coast. Another less developed system of defences was five miles behind, and the beginnings of a third system ran from Tulkam across the plain of Sharon to Nar Iskandiyun. The Ottoman army's defences were inflexible defence relying on a line of trenches which required every inch of ground, to be fought for when a more flexible system would have better suited the situation. On 17 September 1918, Ottoman Army Intelligence accurately placed five infantry divisions and a detachment opposite their 8th Army. As a consequence, the 46th Infantry Division was moved up 8.1 miles to the southwest to a new reserve position at Ettire, directly behind the Ottoman 22 Corps' frontline divisions. Chapter 3 Battle. Chapter 3 Section 1, The 19th of September. Chapter 3 Section 1 Subsection 2 Bombardment. At 4.30 a bombardment by artillery, trench mortars and machine guns began firing at the German and Ottoman front and second lines of trenches in front of 21 Corps. This intense bombardment, which closely resembled a Western Front-style bombardment, continued for a half hour, with guns deployed one to every 50 yards of front on the coastal sector. Under cover of this bombardment, the leading infantry advanced to the front line. Just before their arrival, the barrage lifted and began firing behind the Ottoman front line. There was no attempt at systematic attempt by the artillery to cut the wire, 
The leading units were to cut it by hand or carry some way of crossing or bridging it. The artillery was organized by weight and targets. Heavy artillery was employed in counter battery fire, with guns and 4.5 inch howitzers shelling objectives beyond the range of the field artillery's barrage and where the infantry advance was delayed. Field artillery bombarded the Ottoman front line until the infantry advance arrived, then, the 18 pounders and Royal Horse artillery batteries lifted to form a creeping barrage in front of the infantry up to their range. This barrage began firing at a range of 4,000 yards but by 8 o'clock it had been extended to 15,000 yards as the guns lifted and moved forward at a rate of 50 yards per minute, 75 yards per minute or 100 yards per minute in front of the three divisions, separate and uniquely timed advances. Chapter 3 Section 1 Subsection 3 7th Division Attack Western Sector The 7th Division, consisting of the 19th, 21st and 28th Brigades, commanded by Major General V. B. Fane, advanced under cover of the bombardment, their creeping barrage moving forward at a rate of 100 yards per minute. They were to assault the western end of the Tabsa defences, between a wadi west of Tabsa and the wadi Herp el Misk on the right of the 60th Division's advance. Once these objectives had been captured, they were to advance and capture a second system of trenches defending at Tyre without artillery support, as the guns would be out of range and in the process of being moved forward. The 7th Division's 19th Brigade consisting of the 1st Battalion, C 4th Highlanders, 28th Punjabis, 92nd Punjabis and 125th Napiers Rifles, with the 1st Guides and 20th Punjabis and the 134th Machine Gun Company attached, were formed into two columns in front of the British wire, each column on a frontage one battalion wide. The initial attack by the 28th and the 92nd Punjabis, under cover of the creeping barrage, was completely successful, and included the capture of a 150mm howitzer battery by five men of the 92nd Punjabis and the 1st Guides. The second attack on the entire defensive line, by the 1st Battalion, Seaforth Highlanders and the 125th Napier's Rifles, met with more opposition but was eventually successful. Subsequently, 40 men from the 125th Napier's Rifles captured 200 soldiers and six machine guns defending the only crossing of the Zaquier Marshes. A second battery of 105mm howitzers behind the captured position and the trenches at Ayun el Bas from which the German or Ottoman force had covered the Zaquier crossing, was seized by the 1st Battalion, Seaforth Highlanders. The remaining two battalions of the 21st Brigade, the 2nd Battalion, the Black Watch and the 1-8th Bierke Rifles, captured the frontline system of defences under cover of the creeping barrage, and then advanced to capture the Wadi Herp El Misk and 350 prisoners. At 8.40, the 7th Division had advanced to a position to allow the 4th Cavalry Division to advance to capture Afula and Basin. By 9 o'clock the 21st Brigade was in the process of reforming at Ayun el Bas, with the return of the 1st Guides and 20th Punjabis from the 19th Brigade. The 1st Guides had still not arrived back to the 21st Brigade when, at 1300 hours, the Brigade marched to Et Taya, which the 75th Division had captured at 11 o'clock. Here they concentrated east of the village, while the 19th Brigade also moved towards Et Tyre. At 16.30 the 21st Brigade continued their advance eastwards across the Tulkarm Road, where their 20th Punjabis were heavily machine-gunned by a German battalion in the foothills of the Judean Hills. Their objective had been Falamier, but they were stopped 0.75 miles from that village. Meanwhile, the 2nd Battalion, Royal Highlanders came up to assist the 92nd Punjabi's attack, together succeeding in the capture of El Majdal. The 3rd Brigade of the 7th Division, consisting of the 2nd Battalion, Leicestershire Regiment, the 51st Sikhs, the 53rd Sikhs and the 56th Punjabi Rifles, were supported by the recently returned 264th Brigade Royal Field Artillery on completion of the creeping barrage. By 12.30, this brigade had reached a point northeast of the Zakia Marsh and had turned east to advance with its battalions in a diamond formation towards Et Tayyib on the eastern side of the Tulkarm Road. Their advance guard, the 56th Punjabi Rifles, 
drove in a rearguard position 1.5 miles northwest of Et Tire about 1530. The survivors of this rearguard position re-established themselves 1,500 yards further east on a lower ridge. This second rearguard position was captured soon after, and Tei was occupied at 1800 hours when the brigade bivouacked northeast and south of the village. Chapter 3 Section 1 Subsection 4 75th Division Attack the Center Comprising the 232nd, 233rd and 234th Brigades, the 75th Division advanced under cover of the creeping barrage which lifted at a rate of 50 yards per minute. The bombardment in front of their line was so accurate that the leading infantry units were able to keep within 40 yards of the advancing line of shells, suffering only one casualty from their own fire. The 234th Brigade advanced with the leading companies of the 1152nd Indian Infantry and the 58th Vaughan's Rifles on the left. In the center, two companies of the 1/5th Battalion, Somerset Light Infantry had been attached to the 234th Brigade. They formed an advance guard to attack an isolated defensive line 600 yards in front of the main defenses. The 4th Battalion, Wiltshire Regiment, and the two-thirds Gurkha Rifles of the 232nd Brigade advanced on the right. These units attacked under the creeping barrage and successfully captured all objectives, including the isolated Ottoman frontline trenches, the main trenches and the Ottoman batteries beyond dot while the advance guard consolidated its capture of the isolated trench line, the two main columns, formed by the 232nd and 234th brigades, moved on to the main defensive works in front of Et Tire. This position was defended by the Ottoman 8th Army's Reserve Division, the 46th Division commanded by Major Tiller. Here Tiller held an extensive fortified trench system surrounded by a network of cactus hedges, making a formidable obstacle. As the 234th Brigade continued their advance with the 1 Quarter Battalion, Duke of Cornwall's Light Infantry and the 123rd Outram's Rifles in artillery formation, two or three Ottoman batteries in the Wadi southwest of Misk fired on the 1 152nd Indian Infantry to within 60 yards. Shortly after 8 o'clock an Indian bayonet attack captured three 150mm howitzers, seven 77mm guns and their detachments, along with the trenches defending at tire. The 232nd Brigade advanced with their leading companies in line, the remainder in artillery formation, the 4th Battalion Wiltshire Regiment on the right, and the two-thirds Gurkha Rifles on the left. They had quickly captured the main front-line trenches under the creeping barrage before advancing to capture Misk at 7 o'clock, supported by the South African Field Artillery Brigade, which had moved forward after completing its part of the creeping barrage. A firing line was established at the edge of Et Tire, after an advance of five miles by the 4th Battalion, Wiltshire Regiment, the two-thirds Gurkha Rifles and the 72nd Punjabis, which had been Brigade Reserve. Here they were targeted by the defenders, every exposed infantryman was shot. This stymied attack was eventually reinforced by the 232nd Brigade's 4th Battalion, the 3rd Kashmir Imperial Service Infantry, some armored cars and a cavalry squadron, which compelled the Ottoman defenders to evacuate at Tyre by 11 o'clock when Refet Bay's 22 Corps headquarters were captured. The retiring Ottoman force was pursued by armored cars, while the reserve 233rd Brigade, comprising the remainder of the 5th Battalion, Somerset Light Infantry, the 3 3rds Gurkha Rifles, the 29th Punjabis, and the two 154th Indian Infantry, moved forward to Misk. The 75th Division suffered 518 casualties, 352 of whom were from the 232nd Brigade. Chapter 3 Section 1 Subsection 5 3rd Division Attack Eastern Sector The objectives of the 3rd Division, consisting of the 7th, 8th and 9th Brigades, were to break through the Tabsa defenses at Sabi and advance east, capturing Jiljalai and the railway redoubt, before advancing towards Kaltli, K.H. Kafir Thilth, Azan and Gius in the foothills of the Judean Hills. The 9th Brigade, consisting of the 2nd Battalion, Dorsetshire Regiment, the 1 over 1 Gurkha Rifles, the 93rd Burma Infantry and the 105th Maratar Light Infantry, 
began their advance at 427, supported by a creeping barrage which lifted and moved forward at a rate of 100 yards per minute. The brigade moved via taped stretches into no man's land, where a heavy Ottoman barrage of high explosive shells fell on them, with little rifle or machine gun fire until they approached the trenches. West of Sabi, the 105th Martyr Light Infantry and 2nd Battalion, Dorsetshire Regiment attacked German and Ottoman infantry, which attempted to stop their advance. Between 5 o'clock and 5.30, the 93rd Burma Infantry and the 1 over 1 Gurkha rifles had advanced to cut the second trench line, running from Tabsa to Kalkli. A threatened counter-attack from the north was stopped by a detachment from the 1 over 1 Gurkha rifles, which captured 136 prisoners and two machine guns. Due to constant cutting of the telephone lines and bombardment haze making visual signaling impossible, the commander of the 9th Brigade rode forward to assess the situation and ordered the advance to continue towards Gia's stop. The 9th Brigade moved eastwards, crossing the railway one mile northwest of Kalkli at 9 o'clock with the 93rd Burma Infantry in the centre, the 105th Martyr Light Infantry on their right, the 1 over 1 Gurkha rifles on their left and the 2nd Battalion, Dorsetshire Regiment in reserve. Although the Ottoman 20th Division had been completely overrun, progress on the left was slowed by reserves from the Asia Corps west of Azam. Gius was eventually captured by the 105th Martyr Light Infantry and two companies from the 93rd Burma Infantry about nightfall, when two German officers and 18 other prisoners were captured. The attack by the 8th Brigade, consisting of the 1st Battalion Manchester Regiment, the 47th Sikhs, the 59th Sindh Rifles and the two 124th Duchess of Connaught's own Baluchistan Infantry, began at 4.45 towards the Wadi Ishkar, west of Jiljulai. The 1st Battalion Manchester Regiment at Ras El Ain, and the two 124th Baluchistan Infantry at Tel El Merkma, advanced rapidly capturing the first line of defence, between Bia Odis and the Hadra Road. A company from the Manchester Regiment advanced on both sides of the railway, eventually reaching a bridge over the Wadi Ishkar west of Jiljulai. Here, they fired on the village and railway redoubt with two machine guns, while the Baluchistan infantry advanced to occupy Bayer Odis at 7.15. At 9.10 the 47th Sikhs reinforced the attack on the railway redoubt, supported by an intense five-minute bombardment. Shortly afterwards, the redoubt, along with a pack gun and two machine guns, was captured by the Baluchistan infantry. At 10.45 a bombardment covered the 1st Battalion Manchester Regiment's attack on Jiljulai, which was easily captured after the Ottoman defenders had quickly withdrawn, in consequence of the advance by the 7th Brigade, 3rd Division, which was threatening to cut them off. At 12.30 artillery fire from the 4th Brigade RFA was directed on Ablay, which was captured 30 minutes later, the 8th Brigade's advance was resumed at 13.30 towards Cage. Ras at Tyre and Tel Manasif. Both objectives were reached about 1800 hours, the brigade bivouacking for the night behind strong outposts. Meanwhile, the 7th Brigade advanced with the two 7th Gurkha rifles on the right, the 27th Punjabis on the left, the 1st Battalion Connaught Rangers in the left rear and the 91st Punjabis in support, under cover of the creeping barrage of heavy artillery and machine gun fire. They attacked the Ottoman frontline defences, which at first were supported by high explosive Ottoman artillery fire, the 27th Punjabis suffered more than 100 casualties in dense clouds of dust, smoke and shrapnel. Nevertheless, the brigade advanced to capture Kufa Saba at 7.12 and Kalkli at 9 o'clock. By 1400 hours the brigade was ordered to support the 8th Brigade attack on Azan, but the order was not received until 15.30 so most of their advance was made during the night, eventually halting at 2400 hours, two miles west of Azan. Chapter 3 Section 1 Subsection 6 Ottoman Defenders Reports by 5.45 telephone communication to the Ottoman front had been cut and five minutes later all German and Ottoman reserves had been ordered forward. At 8.50, Sivat's 8th Army reported to Lehman von Sanders, commander of the Yildirim Army Group at Nazareth, 
that its 7th Division Division was out of the fight and the 19th Division was under attack. Small groups of survivors from the 7th and 20th Divisions managed to continue fighting while retiring. They formed a rear guard of 100 soldiers with two machine guns and 17 artillery guns from the 7th Division and 300 soldiers, while four machine guns and seven guns from the 20th Division also made a desperate attempt to hold the British Empire attack. Lehman von Sanders ordered the 110th Infantry Regiment to advance from Nablus in support of the 8th Army. These forces were to stop the EF advance to the Tulkarm to Nablus Road at the easily defended narrow, steep sided pass near Aneta. The 19th Division was forced to retreat towards Krikasim, and the 22nd Corps, threatened with encirclement, was in retreat towards Et Tyre, having lost most of its artillery. By 1630, Sivat had been informed that Et Tyre was captured and cut off from reports from his 22 Corps, he began to move his headquarters north at dusk. Sivat said, The enemy has broken through our lines in spite of our counter attacks, without assistance operations are impossible. A remnant from the 7th Division managed to establish a temporary divisional headquarters at Mesudier. That night, Lehman von Sanders had no combat formations available to stop the cavalry advance up the coast, while in the Judean Hills the British Empire infantry attacks forced the Yildirim Army Group's two armies to retire. Chapter 3, Section 2 the 20th of September. General Bolfin, commanding the 21st Corps, issued orders for the continuation of the battle on the 20th of September. The 7th Division's objectives were to attack and capture Deir Sheraf, Sebastjai, and Burka, while the 3rd Division's objective was to establish a position through Beit Yudhen and Kusain commanding the Nablus to Deir Sheraf Road. The 7th and 3rd Divisions advanced to the northeast, through the hills towards ancient Samaria, while the 60th Division moved east from Tulkarm along the Tulkarm to Nablus Road with the 5th Light Horse Brigade, still attached to the 60th Division, advancing north of Tulkarm to cut the railway line between Mesadaya and Jenin. The 75th Division continued in reserve at Et Tyre, where they may have been assigned the management of thousands of prisoners. Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 2 7th Division the 7th Division advanced in two columns. The 21st Brigade, on the right, supported by a mixed field artillery brigade of two 4.5 inch howitzer and one 18 pounder batteries, and a machine gun company, advanced through Falamier and Kufa Zibard. The 19th Brigade, on the left, with the 8th Mountain Artillery Brigade and two machine gun companies, followed by the 28th Brigade moved through El Majdal and Kufasur. The 21st Brigade advanced along a track beyond Kufasibad that proved impassable for the artillery, which was sent back to Et Tyre, where it came under orders of the 75th Division. Meanwhile, the 19th Brigade captured a small rearguard position at Kufasur before advancing under fire at 11 o'clock to a point 1,000 yards from the village of Beit Lid. The brigade's Lewis guns forced the Ottoman or German battery supporting the rearguard to withdraw, but heavy machine gun fire stopped the 125th Napier's rifles from crossing the gully between Seferin and Beit Lid. Without artillery support, an attack by the 1st Battalion, Seaforth Highlanders, which began at 1400 hours, was held up by a strong rearguard position strengthened by cactus hedges 200 yards from the village they suffered 200 casualties during their attacks. After reinforcements from the first guides arrived, the attack was renewed at 1620. By 1730, a battery of the 8th Mountain Artillery Brigade was able to get into position to cover an advance by the 28th Punjabis armed with grenades, which entered and cleared Beit Lid at 1815. At 21.30 the 28th Brigade began their advance towards Masudier Station and Sebastjai. Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 3 Third Division The 3rd Division's 7th and 8th Brigades began their advance at 5 o'clock. The 7th Brigade's 91st Punjabis began their advance towards Azam, while the 8th Brigade moved along the Wadi Azam. As the 1st Battalion Manchester Regiment moved along the south bank, and the 47th Sikhs moved along on the north bank, with the 59th Sindh rifles in the rear, they quickly found themselves in a critical position. 
The leading battalions encountered about 200 German soldiers and 12 machine guns in a well-sighted rearguard position south of the Wadi. Without any artillery support, an extended battle followed. The 59th Sindh rifles were ordered to join the fight, and a howitzer was rushed forward from the 428th Battery, coming into effective action at 12.30, when resistance almost immediately ceased. The 7th Brigade's 27th Punjabis followed the 91st Punjabis along the Wadi Azan, and the 91st Punjabis entered the village of Azan at 8.10 where large quantities of stores were captured. The capture of Azan, which had been the headquarters of the Asia Corps and the location of von Oppen's reserves, was claimed by the 47th Sikhs and the 91st Punjabis. The 8th Brigade continued their advance without interruption to Jin Safut, which was occupied in the evening. The 1st Battalion, Connaught Rangers were ordered to pass through the 8th Brigade and capture the road junction northeast of El Fundak. Here they captured an artillery column of five field guns, horses, wagons and prisoners which had been held up by fire from the 9th Brigade. The 9th Brigade made their way along the rocky Wadi Sir to Bukka, where they saw German soldiers retiring along the road to Deir Sheraf. The brigade artillery came into action against this target, initially one section and then the whole of the 9th Mountain Artillery Brigade and some machine guns, completely blocking the road with smashed vehicles. The 93rd Burma Infantry reached the road two miles northeast of El Fundak at 1510, where they captured about 250 prisoners, many of them German. A company of the 2nd Battalion, Dorsetshire Regiment on the extreme left captured 151 prisoners north of Karyat Hagia. Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 4 German, and Ottoman Retreat After being forced out of his headquarters at Nazareth on the morning of 20 September, Lehman von Sanders drove via Tiberius and Samak late in the afternoon, arriving at Dira during the morning of 21 September on his way to Damascus. Here he received a report from the 4th Army, which he ordered to withdraw to the Dirar to Urbid line without waiting for their southern Hejaz troops. Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 5 Position of 21 Corps By the end of the 20th of September, the 8th Ottoman Army had been pushed back out of the coastal plain of Sharon and the Desert Mounted Corps was blocking the 7th and what remained of the 8th Army's main lines of retreat northwards. The 60th Division held Tulkam and Aneta, the 7th Division held the village of Beit Lid and controlled the crossroads at Deir Sheraf, while the 5th Light Horse Brigade had cut the Jenin Railway south of Arabe. Both the 3rd and 7th Divisions had continued to force the 7th and 8th Ottoman Army's retreat. During 19 and 20 September, the 21st Corps had destroyed the right wing of the Ottoman front line, capturing 7,000 prisoners and 100 guns. Remnants of the 8th Army which had escaped were captured the next day by Desert Mounted Corps at Jenin, in the Zdrelon Plain to the north of the Judean Hills. During two days of fighting the 21st Corps total casualties were 3,378, of whom 446 were killed. They captured 12,000 prisoners, 149 guns and large quantities of ammunition and transport. With the exception of the Asia Corps, the whole Ottoman 8th Army had been destroyed. My infantry yesterday captured Tulkaram, and are now pursuing the enemy eastwards to Nablus. This morning my cavalry occupied a fillet, and pushed thence rapidly southeastwards, entered base in this evening, thus closing to the enemy his last line of escape. Chapter 4, Aftermath The 28th Brigade, 7th Division advanced from Beit Lid at 21.30 on an overnight march towards Masudia Station and Sebastjai. They arrived at the Aneta Road near Ramin at 1.30, and by 3 o'clock had advanced to capture the Masudia Station along with an engine and 16 carriages, before continuing towards Sebastjai. During this march, a strong rearguard in the ruins of Samaria was attacked by the 51st and 53rd Sikhs. After working their way through an olive grove on the northwest side of the Central Powers rearguard position, they attacked from the flank, with a platoon of 51st Sikhs gaining the crest from the southwest. The garrison of 181 German soldiers was captured with eight light and heavy machine guns. 
more than 400 sick were found in a hospital nearby. The 3rd Division continued its advance at 5 o'clock, meeting some opposition near Rafadia 2,000 yards west of Nablus. Here, they occupied a 5.5 miles line stretching from Rafadia to 1.5 miles east of Burka. Chapter 4 Section 1, 7th Army Retreat The bulk of the 7th Army had been retreating down the Wadi Farah road where guns and transport had to be abandoned when heavily bombed and machine gunned from the air. This army then turned north at Ain Shibal, moving towards Basin. During the night of 20-21 September a long column of retiring Ottoman forces was seen moving down the road from Nablus to Basin, about eight miles north of Nablus. British and Australian aircraft subsequently bombed the column, at first just blocking one end of a defile, but later returning a number of times. Four hours later the area was covered with the wreckage of 90 guns, 50 lorries and more than 1,000 other vehicles. The Ottoman 53rd Division, which had managed to get down the Wadi Farah before it was blocked by the air attack, was captured by Chaita's force on the 22nd of September during the fighting for the bridge at Gisa Ed Damier. During 23rd and 24th of September, 1,500 prisoners were captured by Chetwode's 20 Corps in the Judean Hills. Chapter 4 Section 2 Eighth Army Retreat Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 222 Corps The survivors from the 8th Army's 22 Corps, which had retreated down the main Damascus Road on 20 September, were captured by the 3rd Light Horse Brigade at Jenin that night. At 1500 hours on 21 September, Sivat Pasa, the 8th Army commander, left Nablus by car for Mustafa Kemal's 7th Army headquarters with his chief of staff and some staff officers. It was the end of the Ottoman 8th Army, the 20th and 21st regiments existing only until that afternoon. Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 3 Asia Corps During the night of 20-21 September Lehman von Sanders had ordered the 16th and 19th Division west of Nablus, where they made contact with von Oppen's left-wing force. The next morning von Oppen formed the remnants of the 702nd and 703rd Battalions into one battalion with a rifle company, a machine gun company and a trench mortar detachment, while the 701st Battalion and a cavalry squadron remained intact. At 10 o'clock, von Oppen was informed the EF was approaching Nablus and that the Wadi Farah road was blocked. As a result, he decided to retreat via Beit Dejan seven miles east-southeast of Nablus to the Jordan at Gisa Ed Damier, but this way was also found to have been cut. Von Oppen then ordered the Asia Corps to retreat without guns or baggage via Mount Ebal when they were attacked by British Empire artillery and suffered casualties. That night, Von Oppen bivouacked at Tamoon with the 16th and 19th Divisions at Tubas. Von Oppen was moving northwards from Tubas towards Basin the next day, with about 700 German and 1,300 Ottoman soldiers of the 16th and 19th Divisions, when he learned it had already been captured. He decided to advance during the night of the 22nd of September to Samuk, where he correctly guessed Lehman von Sanders would order the establishment of a strong rearguard. However, Jivat, the commander of the 8th Army, ordered him to cross the Jordan instead, he successfully got all the Germans and some of the Ottoman soldiers across before the 11th Cavalry Brigade attack, which closed the last Jordan River gaps. Those who had not crossed were captured.